Typhus Epidemic in Russia from 1918 to 1922 by Raquel Rosero. Typhus was a reoccurring problem in Russia throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The disease began in urban areas and then spread to rural areas until it infected the entire country. Typhus is closely tied to poverty and overcrowding. The worst typhus epidemic took place in Russia during the Civil War from 1918 to 1922. It is estimated that 15 to 25 million people were infected and two to three million people died from the disease. The spread of infection during this time was linked to mass movements of population due to war and famine. These populations included soldiers, refugees, and prisoners. So how has typhus been understood? In the early 19th century, typhus was believed to be spread by miasma or bad air. In 1827, a military doctor in Russia named Ivan Preble noted that a typhus outbreak had been accompanied by a lice infestation. He then built a Russian steam bath and noted that it killed the lice. Other physicians around this time also began to notice that the spread of typhus was linked to overcrowding, filth, and poverty. By the late 19th century, the germ theory had become the dominant theory to explain the spread of typhus. It was suspected that typhus was spread to humans by blood feeding insects infected with a pathogen. The disease seemed to be spread by close contact with an infected person, their clothing, or their bedding. Doctors and caretakers were also getting sick. In 1876, a physician named Osip Mochakovsky, who suspected typhus was spread by insects, infected himself with a blood from a typhus patient. He contracted the, the disease, but was unable to isolate the pathogen responsible. In 1909, Charles Nicolet proved that lice were the source of typhus outbreaks and won the Nobel Prize for his discovery. In 1960, 1916, the typhus-causing bacterium, Rickettsia proazeski, was discovered. R. proazeki, which causes typhus, is transmitted from the body louse, Pediculus humanus corporis, to humans by contamination of bite sites or mucous membranes with feces containing the bacterium and is spread throughout the bloodstream. The bacterium can remain live in the feces of lice for up to 100 days. Typhus is characterized by rash, high fever, headache, and confusion. Prior to the 19th century, typhus and typhoid which symptoms include fever, diarrhea, and vomiting, were treated as the same diagnosis. The diseases were distinguished from one another in the 1830s. Typhus kills 10 to 30% of people who contract it. Humans who contract typhus and recover still retain some of the bacterium in a dormant state for the rest of their lives. Under stressful conditions, a person who was previously infected can relapse and develop Brill-Zinser disease a milder form of typhus, years after the initial infection. So how has typhus been treated by the medical community? In the early 19th century, steam baths were used to treat patients with typhus. During that time, miasma or bad air was believed to spread the disease, and so it was thought that steam entered the body through the pores and cured infection. Although body louse had not yet been attributed to typhus, this treatment had some success as lice cannot survive in temperatures above 122 degrees Fahrenheit. During the 1918 to 1922 epidemic in Russia, there was no cure available. Typhus patients who were brought into the hospital were deloused before admission and hairy areas of their body were shaved. Their clothes were steamed or treated with dry air or benzene fume to, to kill lice. Because there was no available cure, physicians focused on treating symptoms and prescribed medications such as digitalis to relieve symptoms, antiparasitic medications such as quinine, and recommended rest. After recovery, patients were kept in the hospital for an additional 5 to 15 days to prevent them from infecting lice. Today, the most effective treatment for typhus is a single dose of an antibiotic called doxycycline. A seven-day course of tetracycline may also be prescribed. The improvements should be seen in 48 hours of taking either medication. How has typhus been viewed within society? Prior to the 19th century, the history of typhus is poorly documented. But by the time of the epidemic in Russia, most of the public was aware that lice was involved in the transmission of epidemic typhus. A lot of effort was put into prevention 
and educating the public about the importance of staying away from infected people and crowded areas. Pamphlets were handed out and public lectures were held. The Soviet government also set up 300 isolation and disinfection stations along railways and waterways. Although Laos control was a major public tool, overcrowding, poverty, and the mass movements of soldiers and refugees hindered its implementation and effectiveness. After the Civil War ended in late 1922, conditions began to improve in Russia. Fewer refugees and soldiers were moved around and improvements in the food supply were made. Both contributed to the decline in the number of reported cases of typhus. In 1922, in response to the typhus epidemic in Russia and other epidemics that occurred around the same time, the Health Organization of the League of Nations was established to set up plans to control the spread of epidemic diseases. The health organization later became the World Health Organization, who, on April 7, 1947. Although typhus is considered a rare disease today, it is still considered to be a major threat by public health authorities. In the 1930s, the Soviet Union tested epidemic typhus as a bioweapon. Because of this, and the fact that typhus-causing bacterium bacteria can live for long periods of time in feces and can be transmitted through the air, R. Prozetsky is considered to be a potential Category B bioterrorism agent. If an infected person is infected with lice, a new epidemic could start.